Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice radio, and if everything's gone well, and the schedule is held, then today is the release date of Battle Stars, the official release date. So, of course, I think that means we need to do a little bit of a buy list, and here's the thing. Even though sealed products will be hard to get hold of here and there, we know about the allocation, etc., it's still usually fairly easy to pick up singles. And in this video, what I'm trying to do is give you a list of the cards that you need to basically build whatever deck you want in the future. Now, as always, I'm not really including attackers here. I think Mean Shower is amazing. I'm probably going to play nothing but Mean Shower as soon as Excadrill rotates out. But you're either playing Mean Shower or you're not. So Mean Shower doesn't go on the buy list because it's a personal thing. Similarly, when we talk about Pokemon Vs and Vmaxes, I am only going to suggest them if I think they're going to be played in multiple decks, because otherwise they're going to end up being a little bit expensive. Although I'm going to give you a free bit of advice at the beginning of the video here. Victini Vmax is looking like an absolute tier 1 deck. The early results from Japan are incredibly strong. The early hype is incredibly strong and there is a very very good chance that Victini V Max really is that gosh darn good so I'm telling you this now ladies and gentlemen you may wish to try and pick this one up sooner rather than later that's what's his advice at the beginning of the video so starting off then going through the buy list properly you're going to need some copies of Weeping Bell. Weeping Bell has got that ability whereby when you evolve into it, you can both burn and poison your opponent's active Pokemon. This can do extra damage. It can slow them down. It can combo with other cards. It is exactly the kind of thing you're going to need to have a couple copies of. I know I said I wouldn't say many Pokemon V, but you need two Cricketune V. It's got an ability that lets you draw until you've got three cards in your hand. Four if you're active. You don't really need more than two of these because it's limited to once during your turn. You might need two in case one is prized. But this is one of those two prize support Pokemon. And it's going to outlast the Dene in the rotation. And it's going to outlast Crobat in the rotation. It should last one rotation beyond Crobat. And if you take both Crobat and the Dene out of the format right now... How many of you are going to want to play this Cricket Tune? I'm willing to bet pretty much all of you. Even if you don't want to play it now, think about the future. You need two to four copies of Cherim. It's got an amazing ability that allows you to attach as much grass energy as you like to your Pokemon without rule boxes. Non-GXs, non-Vs, etc. And again, this isn't a Pokemon that's good now. But at some point in the future, there is an excellent chance that we end up getting a card that combos beautifully with this. Don't be one of those people scrambling to buy this when that happens and the price skyrockets. I think you need one copy of Flapple V. I know a lot of people disagree with me. That's absolutely fine. I adore the Sour Spit ability. One energy, 20 damage, and it increases the defending Pokemon's attack cost by two energy. If you're late in the game and you're losing and your opponent has just enough energy to win, Flapple V means they don't have enough energy and it means you can pull out a ridiculous win that you probably shouldn't be able to i adore this as a one-off tech feel free to ignore me if you disagree Embor is another one i think you need two of it's got an ability that says your single strike pokemon do an extra 30 damage well if you're playing a single strike deck this is going to be awesome spoiler for later but don't forget we've got mustard coming along which will let you play it from the deck as long as Mustard is the only card in your hand, and then you draw five. So, you don't even need to evolve it up like normal. Two is probably enough here, but if you're playing a single strike deck, you're probably playing Mustard, and if you're playing Mustard, you're probably playing one Empoleon. You might want to pick one up. Similarly, Octillery for Rapid Strike deck seems like something you need a couple of. It's a stage one, and it lets you search for any Rapid Strike card. Supporter, Pokemon energy whatever you like it is another ability that is limited to once during your turn regardless of how many octillery you have so you probably don't need more than a couple but you need a couple i know i'm to point out another pokemon v here but i assure you it is the last one i think you need one to two copies of empoleon v purely because it's got an ability that turns off basic pokemon's abilities that don't have a rule box 
Empoleon V is going to be a great tech in any Rapid Strike deck. And that's what we're looking at here with a buy list, right? I'm not saying this card is amazing, go and buy it. You know what decks you're probably going to want to go and play. Although top tier decks like Victini, I will point out because I think that's important. But although, bearing in mind, I will do my, I've probably already done, hopefully, my video on the best new decks from Battle Styles. So again, you can check that out if you want to see which attackers are likely to be good. But any Rapid Strike deck you're playing in the future, you're probably going to want one or two Empoleon, because if you end up against a deck that's using basic abilities, it could win you the game. And that's the kind of thing we're looking at here. So I think you need one or two of them. Yamper, I think you need two to four of these, and I know that sounds a little bit silly, but Yamper's got an amazing ability that lets you grab a Pokeball and a Great Ball from your discard pile and put them into your hand. If we ever get a good bolt on, this will be the best Yamper. But even without a good bolt on, this seems like one that could really end up being pretty good in a whole bunch of decks. Meowstic, I think you need a couple copies of. Meowstic is one of these ones. It's got a rather nice ability. Let's you, once during your turn, move a damage counter from one of your Pokemon to one of your opponents. It's an ability that saw play on Meowstic EX. So, I know this is a stage one, but it's also a single prize Pokemon. It's one I think you should bear in mind. Two to four copies of Golbat and Crobat. I'm willing to be wrong about this, but at the moment, the hype isn't high, which means the price is not going to be particularly high, even though Crobats are hollow. But Golbat, when you evolve into it, you draw two cards, and Crobat, when you evolve into it, you draw three. Start bringing in stuff like Scoop Up Net. And then hopefully playing both of them at the same time. And a scoop up that means you draw five. And we've got a potential draw engine for the future. Like I keep saying, even if you can't see how this is going to work now, please appreciate the fact that in the future, things might change and it might get so much better. I think you need two to four copies of Houndoom, because if you're ever playing a single strike deck, Houndoom is over the top nuts good. Let's you search for a single strike energy and attach it to one of your single strike Pokemon. Yeah, fine, you got to take a couple damage counters, but it's really not the end of the world. The thing is, I could see you having three or four of these out on the field at the same time if you are playing this deck, if you're playing a single strike deck, so yeah. Houndoom looks pretty gosh darn good. I think you need the last Pokemon on the list. Two to four copies of Bronzong. Bronzong's got an ability that lets you move all of your metal energy around the field. And we've seen abilities like this in the past. And they've always ended up being good. I've seen this winning over in Japan with Mewtwo and Mew. I've seen it winning over in Japan with Zashim. You'd better believe this is one that is going to see a whole bunch of play. Both with Pokemon we've already got and Pokemon we haven't seen yet, and that makes it one that definitely needs to go on this list. Now, in terms of trainer cards, remember my rule. I think you just need to get a place out of everything. You never know what's going to be good. I do have an exception here, and that is Sword, Word, and Shield, but I don't think you need this card. I honestly think you can ignore this card, and I never really say this, and I'm willing to be wrong about it, but I'm going to go and get a place out of all the other trainer cards from this set, I ain't getting any sword, but and shield, sword, word, and shield, but I don't know, the names are weird. I'm ignoring that card entirely. The other caveat is that we've got some reprints in this set. So, Energy Recycler, if you don't have it, pick it up, but you've probably already got it. Escape Rope, amazing card that makes both players switch their active. If you don't have it, get a playset, but you've probably got it. EXP Share lets you move energy from the active to one of your bench when your active is KO'd. But again, it's been printed multiple times. You've probably got it if you don't get a play set. And Level Ball might be the best card in the set. But it's been printed a couple of times before. If you don't have Level Ball, run and buy a play set of Level Ball. But honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I rather suspect you have a play set of Level Ball already. So they're reprints. Pick them up if you don't have them. In terms of new cards, I think you need four copies here of Bruno. And I know this is not necessarily going to work in every deck, but if you had a Pokemon KO the previous turn, you shuffle your hand into your deck and draw seven. It's a really good card, and it's a draw card, and it's exactly the kind of card that you can play in a deck because you're going, well, hang on a second, let's just have a starter Pokemon out, something like a Snorlax. When it gets KO'd, then I can start playing Bruno. This seems pretty good to me. It's one that I think you should have a placer of just in case.
Camping gear, you should probably pick up a playset. It's going to be cheap. It doesn't look great. But you search your deck for any card, and then your turn ends. This is going to see play at some point in some kind of disruption deck that doesn't attack. So I think you need them standing by just in case. As I always say, if you don't want to buy any of these cards, feel free to go wussy. I'm not getting camping gear and you can't make me because you know what? I can't make you. Cheryl heals all of your evolved Pokemon at the cost of losing all of the energy. There are going to be decks that take advantage of this card. You're going to need four of them. Fan of Waves removes special energy and fine, it goes back to your opponent's deck on the bottom rather than getting rid of properly. But make no mistake, this is a great card you need for. Corinna's Focus draws two, you've got six cards in your hand. It's a reprint of Bianca. Bianca Saw Play, this should too, you're going to need a four of. Phoebe lets your Pokemon V Maxes hit through any effect on the defending Pokemon. Something like a Zamazenta that should be blocking you, or a Decidueye that should be blocking you will now no longer be blocking you, and that is a good thing. If you're ever playing a VMAX deck in the future, you're probably going to need Phoebe. Scroll of Swirls gives you a nice little extra attack that spreads 30 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Although I don't think it's the best card ever, there is absolutely a chance for a good spreading Rapid Strike deck in the future, especially with that Persimian we looked at the other day. So it's one that I think you should bear in mind. Mustard. And when I say Mustard here, I'm referring to both of them because the Single Strike Mustard lets you play a Single Strike Pokemon from your deck to the bench. And Rapid Strike lets you play a Rapid Strike Pokemon from your discard to the bench. And then draw five cards. Yeah, sure, it's got to be the only card in your hand, but we've seen cards like this in the past and they can absolutely work if you want them to. Scroll of Scorn gives you an extra attack on Single Strike Pokemon that does 10 damage plus as much as is on there. And you know this is going to be a fun little tech in single strike decks when your opponent isn't able to get a one-hit KO. Plus single energy attack. Tool Jammer is one that I've already seen seeing a bunch of play over in Japan. It basically turns off Pokemon tools. So something like an air balloon that your opponent is using for free retreat, as a nice little example, would no longer give free retreat. Some decks will be built to take advantage of this. Tower of Darkness lets you discard a single strike card from your hand and draw two cards. Seems like a great option in single strike decks. And Tower of Water reduces the retreat cost of Rapid Strike Pokemon by two, which basically gives them all free retreat. And again, it's a great option in Rapid Strike decks. Urn of Vitality lets you recover your single strike energy, and recovering special energy is not easy. You probably don't need four of these. You'll probably never put four of them in a deck. But it's one of those you never quite know. And I'd rather err on the side of caution. And then we've got Rapid Strike Energy. It deals an extra 20 damage if it's attached to a single strike Pokemon. It's going to be a four of in every single strike deck. And Rapid Strike Energy counts as two energy. It's going to be a four of in every Rapid Strike deck. So these again are ones that you will need four of. The complete buy list is up on the screen here. And frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I leave it over to you guys. These are my recommendations. These are the cards that I'm going to be picking up because they're the ones which I think are going to go in multiple decks in the future. So if I've got all of these cards, my goal is when I look at my buy list, if I buy everything on there or trade for it or whatever, then I just need to pick up my main attacker and I've got every other card I'm going to need. And anytime I want to pivot to a new deck, I make sure I pick up the main attacker and everything else is in my folder ready to go. But that's just me, ladies and gentlemen. You do as you like. I'm just trying to help. But I want to know what you think. I want to know if there are cards that should have been on this list that weren't. I want to know if there are cards that are on this list that shouldn't be. But let me know in the comment section, ladies and gentlemen. Go nuts. Me nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourself till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.